Good morning. Today we are going to discuss about plant pathology, which is uh, from the second semester BSc Botany course syllabus. Plant pathology or phytopathology is the study of plant diseases. A variety of microorganisms, including fungi, viruses, bacteria, viroids, rickettsia, or flagellate protozoans, can cause diseases in plants. The disease causing agents are called as pathogens. According to the Federation of British Plant Pathologists, a plant may be diseased when there is a harmful deviation from normal functioning of physiological processes. In practice, a plant is considered diseased when certain symptoms appear on a plant body. Robert Koch laid down a series of conditions which must be fulfilled before an organism can be confirmed as the cause of the disease. The conditions are now universally accepted and are known as Koch's postulates. Now these are the following postulates proposed by Robert Koch. The organism must be con consistently associated with the lesions of the disease. The organism must be isolated and grown in pure culture, free from all other organisms. The organism from pure culture must be inoculated onto healthy plants of the same species from which it was originally isolated and must cause the same disease as was originally observed. The organism must be re-isolated and re-inoculated and must once again cause the original disease. These are the four major aspects of plant pathology, etiology, pathogenesis, epidemiology and control. Etiology is the study of the causes or reasons of diseases. It concerns mainly with the living organisms and the non-living factors including environmental conditions which cause diseases in plants. Pathogenesis is the actual mechanism of disease development. It mainly concerns with the process of infection and colonization of the host by pathogens. This phase involves complex host-pathogen interactions. Epidemiology is the study of the spread of a pathogen within the crop areas, so it is mainly concerned with epidemics. Control is the application of suitable methods for controlling the diseases in order to minimize the loss in the yield of crop. Now we can classify plant diseases based on several criteria. Now based on the parts affected, diseases can be classified as localized and systemic. Localized diseases uh, affect a definite part or area of the plant and the pathogen is confined to a restricted area of the plant. The diseases which affect the entire plant are called as systemic diseases. In this case, the pathogen spreads all over the plant. Now, based on the nature of their occurrence, plant diseases can be classified as endemic diseases, epidemic diseases and sporadic diseases. Now, endemic diseases. These are diseases prevalent only in a particular area, country or geographical location. They make their appearance more or less constantly from year to year in a moderate to several form in a particular country or part of the world. The causal agent is well established due to adaptability and survival value and it remains as long as the environmental conditions are not adverse for it. Epidemic diseases or epiphytotic diseases. It is an infectious disease which periodically spreads over vast areas in a sudden and severe outbreak with devastating effects. The term epidemic is usually given for human diseases and its equivalent for plant diseases is represented by the term epiphytotic. An epiphytotic disease may be present constantly in the locality but assumes severe form only occasionally as the environmental conditions favor favorable for the rapid development of the disease occur only periodically. Sporadic diseases are diseases which occur occasionally at very irregular intervals in isolated localities and in relatively low frequencies. Based on the mode of transmission, plant diseases can be classified as soil-borne diseases, air-borne diseases and seed-borne diseases. In soil-borne diseases, the diseases are caused by soil pathogens. 
The pathogens survive in the soil as active forms, resting spores, mycelial strands, rhizomorphs, etc. All these attack root system and thereby infect the host plants. Airborne diseases, uh, in this case the spores and other infectious parts of the pathogens are disseminated by wind. Seedborne diseases, the diseases caused by some pathogens which survive in a dormant or active state inside seeds and other propagative parts of the host plants are called as seedborne diseases. Based on the causal agents, the plant diseases can be classified as infectious and non-infectious. The infectious diseases are caused by pathogens such as viruses, bacteria, mycoplasma, algae, fungi, plant parasites and nematodes. Non-infectious diseases are caused due to the improper environmental conditions of soil and air, injurious mechanical influences, unfavorable temperature, soil moisture, pH, mineral deficiency and toxicity, pesticide toxicity and absence or excess of light etc. Example for non-infectious diseases, black heart of potato, tip burn of paddy etc. The stages of disease development, a disease can be uh, com is completed in various stages, inoculation, penetration, infection, growth and reproduction of the pathogen and dissemination of the pathogen. Now, inoculation is the stage where the pathogen contacts with the host plant. Part of the pathogen that affects inoculation and thereby initiates the disease is called as inoculum. In penetration stage, the pathogen enters the tissues of the host plant. It is accomplished by the entry through holes, cuts and wounds or by piercing through the plant surface. Infection stage. The penetrated pathogen invades and colonizes the host tissues and procures nutrients from them. The interval between penetration and the establishment of infection is called the infection period. The interval between penetration and the appearance of the visible symptoms of the disease is called as the incubation period. Growth and reproduction of the pathogen. The pathogen grows and undergoes repeated multiple action enabling the spread of the infection to neighboring tissues. Dissemination of the pathogen. This is the transfer of the pathogen from an infected host to healthy non-infected hosts. Symptoms of plant diseases. Symptoms are the visible morphological manifestations of a disease exhibited by a disease the plant. Simply, they are the external signs of a disease. The sum total of the different symptoms exhibited by a plant is called a syndrome. The symptoms of plant diseases fall under three major groups, namely necrosis, hypoplasia and hyperplasia. Necrosis. Necrosis is the death of one or more cells or a small part even when the plant is still alive. It is a common symptom of fungal disease. However, bacteria and virus may also cause necrosis. The commonest necrotic symptoms are the following. Spots, rots, cankers, damping, wilting, streaks of stripes, blights, dieback, scabs, blisters or pustules, gummoses, smuts and rusts. Spots Dark brown, red, yellow or grey spots of dead tissue on leaves, stems and fruits. Tar spots are leaf spots with the appearance of a drop of tar on a leaf surface. In some cases, the dead tissue shrinks and detaches from the healthy tissue forming a short pole. Rods Large scale and rapid death and decomposition of the cells of affected tissue leaving the affected area brown. Root rot, leaf rot, stem rot, bud rot and fruit rot are the common types of rots. Rots are usually caused by fungi and bacteria. Cankers. They are large necrotic lesions in the bark or cortex of woody herbaceous stems. Example, citrus canker. Damping. Collapse and death of young seedlings 
when attacked near its ground level. Welding, dehydration, drying, drooping and ultimate death of aerial parts probably due to the plugging of xylem vessels by fungi or mucilaginous substances. Streaks or stripes. They are narrow linear lesions of dead tissue on stem or leaf. Blinds. Sudden and serious damage of death of tissues, leaving brown or black patches on leaves, flowers and twigs. Dieback. Progressive browning and ultimate death of branches from tip to the base. Scabs. These are rough crust-like lesions, mostly on fruits and vegetables. Blisters or pustules. Blister-like pustules on leaves which break open at maturity, exposing the powdery mass of the spores of the pathogen. Gummosis. It is the production of a clear and amber-colored exudate on the surface of the infected part. This exudate later on sets into a solid and water insoluble mass. Smuts Sooty or charcoal like powdery masses commonly found in plants infected by smuts such as Pustilab. Rusts Small, red, yellow or dark brown and pustule like masses of powdery spores which break through the epidermis and appear on the surface. Now hypoplasia. This is the uh, second category of uh, symptoms. This is the abnormal underdevelopment of plants, plant parts due to the diseases or nutrient deficiencies. This makes the plant stunted and dwarf. In extreme cases, an organ or tissue may not develop at all. The commonest hypoplastic symptoms are the following. Chlorosis. Abnormal yellowing and mottling of leaves due to a fall in chlorophyll production to below the normal. Mosaics. These are abnormal leaves with irregular yellow patches intermingled with green areas. Stunting. Extreme retardation and abnormal dwarfening of the pole plant. Variegation. Irregular and abnormal vari variation in the color patterns of leaves or flowers due to the suppression of pigment production. Vein clearing. This is the yellowing of leaf tissue near and around the veins. Rosetting. Overcrowding of leaves into a rosetty due to the abnormal shortening of internodes. Now the third category of plant symptoms belong to the hyperplasia. This is the abnormal overdevelopment of plant parts due to abnormally high rates of cell division or due to abnormal growth of individual cells. It often results from the action of parasites. The commonest hyperplastic symptoms are the following. Gauds and tumors. Large sized and localized swellings on the infected parts of a plant usually produced in response to parasite attack. In tumor cells, small, wart-like and localized pathological swellings of leaf epidermis. Curves, rolling, twisting and distortion of leaves due to abnormal overgrowth of tissue. Which is broom, a broom-like and upright cluster of deformed and closely packed slender branches arising from an extended axis. Hairy roots, a compact cluster of abnormally numerous, thin and hairy fibrous roots. So plant disease control, this is a very important section because uh, there are many strategies which are adopted to control a plant disease from spreading. Now plant disease control measures are mostly prophylactic or preventive rather than curative. They are mainly directed against the pathogen to considerably reduce its population level or inoculum to a very low level. These are four broad categories of prophylactic measures, namely exclusion, eradication, protection and immunization. Exclusion 
It is the avoidance of the entry of plant pests or parasites into an area from outside. Unrestricted movement of plants and their products within and between, uh, between countries has resulted in worldwide distribution of many plant pathogenic organisms. Hence, there is a need for restricting the transport of disease with plant materials into disease-free areas. Quarantine measures can help in restricting the entry of pathogens in a country or state. In, in a country or state, quarantine can be defined as a legal restriction on the movement of agricultural commodities for the exclusion, prevention, or delay in the establishment of plant pests and diseases in areas where they are not known to occur. Eradication is the elimination of pests and pathogens from an infested area. Most common methods of eradication is by cutting and burning the diseased plants. Eradication of alternate or collateral hose is practiced to control plant pathogens which require two or more hosts to complete their life cycle. Other methods of eradication include crop rotation, field sanitation, chemical and heat treatment, biological control. Crop rotation. Crop rotation is a very old practice for avoiding plant diseases and also for improving production. It is beneficial in eradicating especially soil-borne diseases. If the same crop is grown in the same area year after year, the pathogen is assured of its survival in the soil. But crop rotation with unrelated plant species is detrimental to the survival of the pathogen. Field sanitation. Many pathogens survive through dormant structures in the leftover plant debris in the soil. The collection and destruction of these structures reduces the potential inocular. Powdery mildew of wheat, downy mildew of peas, red rot of sugarcane, polyroga of areca farm, etc. are reduced by field sanitation. Chemical and heat treatment. Chemical and heat treatment inactivates or kills pathogens. Hot water treatments have been used to eliminate Ustilago nuda from wheat and barley seeds. Hot air treatments reduce the virus infection of vegetables. Treatment of seeds with fungicides, especially organomercury compounds, removes the superficially born inoculants. Chemicals used in disease control include bactericides, fungicides, herbicides, nematicides, insecticides, etc. The chemical com commonly used in plant disease control include Bordeaux mixture, inorganic and organic sulfur compounds, carbamase, etc. Theran, Ziran, Naban, Zenebe, Manebe, etc. are some of the chemical formulations used in disease control. Biological control, it is the eradication or suppression of plant pathogens using their natural enemies. Trichoderma viridae is a saprophytic fungus which parasites the mycelium of Armillaria milia, a plant pathogenic fungus. Hyperparasitism is the phenomenon in which plant pathogens are parasitized by bacteria. Example, species of tubercularia can attack a variety of rust fungi. Protection. One of the common measures used to prevent the onset of a disease on a crop is to protect the host from the attack by the pathogen. The aim is to treat the host plant so as to create a barrier between the pathogen and the host. It can be achieved by the application of chemical protectants or through the modification of the environment by providing wind breaks and by keeping fruits and vegetables in cold storage. The chemicals used in plant protection can be of three types, eradicants, surface protectants and systemic chemicals. Eradicants are used to get rid of pathogen in soil or on the host plant surface. Surface protectants are used to protect the seeds, fruits or foliage. Systemic chemicals are mostly protectants against infection by virtue of their systemic action on the host. That means action on all parts of the host plant. Immunization, this is also called as genetic control. 
Breeding for disease resistant can yield varieties which are resistant to various diseases. The disease resistant genes from wild relatives can be incorporated into the crop plants by genetic engineering practices to make them immune against the specific pathogen. Now we are going to discuss about some major plant diseases given in your syllabus. Namely citrus canker, Polroga or Mahari disease of Arica nut, Blast of Tadi, Quick Wilt of Pepper, Mosaic disease of Tapioca and Bunchy Top of Banana. Let's discuss each of these one by one. Citrus canker is a widespread disease in all citrus growing areas of the world. It is stated to have originated from China and has spread to Europe and the United States of America. The symptoms of citrus canker, the disease occurs on leaves, twigs, thorns, older branches and fruits. Lesions first appear on leaves as small, round, watery, translucent spots. They are raised and become yellowish brown. They first develop on the lower surface of the leaf and then on both the surfaces. As the disease advances, the surface of the spots become white or greyish and finally ruptures in the center, giving a rough, corky and crater-like appearance. The spots increase in size and may join to form elongated lesions on fruits and twigs. The rough lesions are surrounded by a yellowish brown to green raised margin and watery yellow halo. Spots occurring on petioles and midrib cause premature defoliation. On larger branches, the cankers are irregular, rougher and more prominent. Cankers on fruits are similar to those on leaves, except that the yellow halo is absent and crater-like depressions in the center is more prominent. The injury to the fruits is only skin deep and no effect on pulp or juice is noticed. Cankers on twig causes them to break. The causative organism of citrus canker is a bacterium, Xanthomonas cetera. It is a rod-shaped, gram-negative, aerobic bacterium. The bacterium enters the host through natural openings like stomata or through wounds. It multiplies rapidly in the intercellular spaces and establishes in the cortical region. The disease is favored by mild temperature that is 20 to 30 degrees Celsius and wet weather. The organism does not survive in the soil or in infected plant parts fallen on the ground. The bacteria from the cankers are mostly disseminated by rains and by insects like citrus leaf miners. However, the chief agent for dissemination and introduction into new localities is man himself who transfers the disease through infected nursery stock. Control measures for citrus canker. Use of disease-free nursery stock for planting is the most important control measure. Spraying the plant with 1% bolo mixture before planting. In orchards, pruning of the affected twigs and spraying with 1% bolo mixture at periodical intervals, especially during rainy season, is effective. The drop of canker affected leaves and twigs should be collected and burned. The vigor of the plant should always be maintained by proper irrigation and fertilization. Following strict quarantine measures is another uh, a method for controlling citrus canker and use of resistant varieties is also applicable. The second disease is Polirago, Poliroga or Mahali disease of Areca palm. Poliroga or Mahali disease is a serious pathogen in the western peninsula of India. The disease is prevalent during rainy season, that is from June to September. Now, the symptoms of Poliroga disease are Appearance of water soaked areas at the base of the nut. The shell becomes dark green at these portions. The diseased area gradually spreads and ultimately covers the entire nut. The diseased nut rot and fall off from the bunch prematurely. The fallen nuts show whitish mass of mycelium which soon envelops the entire surface. Occasionally, the crown of the tree undergo rotting and drying. The leaves wither away soon. 
The fossil organism for polar organ disease is a fungus called Phytophthora aricae. The mycelium produces sporangiospores in sporangia, born on sporangiophores. The sporangiospores are motile, hence are also called zoospores. And these are liberated when there is abundant humidity in the atmosphere. Intermittent rains with alternating sunshine cause more rapid spread of the disease. The close plantation of trees also gives ideal condition for the spread of the disease. And these are the sporangia of the causative organism and from these uh, motile zoospores are released which, are the, which cause fresh infection. Control measures for polar disease, cleanliness and sanitation, including destruction of diseased tree tops and plant parts is most effective. Fallen infected food should be collected and burned. Spraying is very effective but difficult due to the height of the trees. The spraying with 0.25% Paranox or with 1% Bodo mixture once in May and again 6 weeks later is found to be very effective. Spraying with phytolam at monthly intervals during summer is also recommended. Next disease to be discussed is blast disease of paddy. It is a widespread disease of paddy occurring all over the world. This disease is more severe in areas of high humidity and high rainfall. In India, blast disease is more common in South India, particularly in the coastal areas. The symptoms of blast disease of paddy are blast disease is mainly a foliar disease that is it infects leaf parts. However, its symptoms may also appear on other parts such as stem and inflorescence. Brownish lesions and spots on leaf blade, leaf sheath, culms, panicles, etc. are seen. Leaf spots are typically spindly shaped with a greyish or white central part and brownish or reddish brown borders. The shape and color of leaf spots may vary depending on environmental conditions, susceptibility of the plant, etc. The spots enlarge as the diseases, disease progresses. Brown to black spots or rings on the ratches of maturing influences can be observed. Small brown or black spots can be seen on your heads. Shriveled combs covered with grey and fluffy mycelium is seen. This is the most conspicuous and the most characteristic symptom. Now, bluish patches on stem is another common symptom. Drooping panicles and absence of grains if infection has occurred before grain formation and whitish and chaffy grains if infection has occurred after grain formation. Low photosynthetic rate, stunted growth and ultimate death of the plant if the infection is severe. The causative organism for blast disease of paddy is a deuteromycete fungus called a spiricularia horizon. The infection occurs through conidia produced by this fungus. Conidia are pyriform to oak clavate, highly to pale olive in color, narrow towards stick and rounded at the base. Mostly two septate and rarely one or three septate conidia can also be observed. The pathogen produces phytotoxic substances namely pyricularin and picolinic acid which inhibit the growth of the rice seedlings. Now these are the conidia of pyricularia or rice which can cause fresh infection. Control measures for blast disease of paddy will do. Direct foliar spray of copper fungicides and organomercury fungicides. Hyrosan, Lytox and Boda mixture are commonly applied. Application of antibiotics such as blastin, blasticidin etc. are also useful. Field sanitation and destruction of alternate host is also effective. Use of disease resistant varieties of rice plants is another option. Next disease to be discussed is quick wilt of pepper, which is also called as foot rot. Now, it causes severe damage in pepper plantations. This disease was first reported from Indonesia in 1936. The disease incidence is generally high when relative humidity is high and temperature is low. The spreading of disease is mainly through soil and water. 
The disease is caused by the fungus Phytophthora palmivora. The symptoms of this disease include rotting of collar, root and leaf, dieback of twig, spike shedding. The, the disease is seen most commonly in pepper vines which are less than 3 years old. Veins of affected leaves may be discolored and decay and the entire branch may detach and fall. Veins of the basal portion are severely affected, leading to the rotting of that region. Hence, the disease is also called as foot rot. Vein rotting seriously interferes with the conduction of nutrients, with the result that the leaves turn yellow and finally they fall off and the plant becomes defoliated. Now the control measures for quick melt of pepper. The best method is applying 1% Bodo mixture. Application of Bodo paste on pepper vines before the onset of monsoon is also found to be effective. Application of egg alone in trenches for the eradication, for the eradication of disease is also recommended. Now the next disease to be discussed is a leaf mosaic disease of tapioca. This is one of the worst diseases of tapioca widespread in Kerala and other tapioca cultivating parts of India. Now the symptoms include, uh, this disease is characterized by a mosaic pattern on leaves with light green, yellow or white spots or patches on the green background of the leaves. In severe infection, the discoloration of the leaves may become striped, mottled and circular patterns with vein clearing and vein thickening. Initially, the affected leaves may show mosaic modeling and later the disease causes serious distortion and malformation of the leaf blade causing overall stunted growth of the plant. Now this is the insect uh, which transmits the disease which is white fly. Scientifically, Bemisia tabaki. It is a sap feeding insect and it spreads the tapioca mosaic virus. Now the control measures for leaf mosaic disease of tapioca, spraying insecticides to destroy the insect vector, burning of the infected plants, altered cultural practices such as changing the planting season. It has been shown that the tapioca plant planted after the beginning of the rainy season is less susceptible to leaf mosaic disease. Now, selection of disease resistant varieties of tapioca is the most effective method. Uh, another disease to be discussed, in fact the last disease that is mentioned in the syllabus to be studied is bunchy top of banana. Now this disease causes huge loss in banana plantations. The disease was first reported from Trangor around 1940. It was supposed to have been introduced through planting stock from Ceylon. Now the symptoms, in badly infected plants, the leaves are typically bunched together at the apex, forming a dense rosity. The young infected plants are usually stunted and show more erect leaves than normal. The first evidence of bunching top disease is seen in the leaves. Green streaks appear on the secondary veins, on the underside of the lamina and on the midrib and petioles. These markings are accompanied by slight transverse wrinkling along the length of the compactly rolled lamina. Causative organism is banana virus 1 and is transmitted by the banana aphid Pentelonia nigro nervosa. All the suckers produced by the diseased plant carry the virus and cause the spread from plantation to plantation. The effects cause the secondary spread during growth of the plants. Now this is the banana effect Pantalonia nigro nervosa which is a vector for the bunchy top virus. Control measures, phytosanitation is most effective. The movement of bunchy top infected planting materials from place to place should be prohibited by law. As soon as diseased plants are located in a plantation, they should be uprooted and burned. Spraying with parathion can control the banana effect and last, breeding of resistant varieties is the most effective option. Thank you.